think. Yeah, as, yeah, there it goes. Now it's recording. All right. Uh, so last thing we did was the horizontal line test. Uh, just a reminder. Why do we use the horizontal line test? So we get a function, right? Right, or a relation. Let's say a relation because we don't know it's a function to begin with. So we have some kind of relation. How do you know if it's a function, the actual relation? How do you know if it's a function to begin with? The vertical line test. If it passes the vertical line test, then it's a function. How do you know, or what does the horizontal line test do for us? It tells you if the inverse is a function or not. Okay. So if it passes the horizontal line test, which means it only hits what? one point, then the inverse is a function. Everybody got it? Okay. So let's move on. Let's do an example. And uh, let's see, yeah, I got everything ready to go. So let's do example two. All right, and here's the function. So f of x equals x plus three in parentheses, that's squared, then a minus five. So I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Uh, two questions we're going to do by hand, and the third we're going to do with a graphing calculator. But I like to use not your normal Texas Instrument graphing calculator. I like to use what? The Desmos, OK? So um, we're going to use that. We're going to take a look at it and see, um, see what it looks like and, and all that stuff. I think it's good to do that. All right, so the first question says, um, is the inverse, the first question, so that they tell you this, this is the information they give you. The question is, is f negative 1, what's that mean, f to the negative first of x? It means the inverse, okay? So is the inverse of the function an actual function? All right, so that's the question. So what would you do? How would you uh, approach this? Uh, a what? A graph? Yeah. OK, we're going to graph it. Exactly. OK, so let's graph this thing. And then let's take a look at it and see if it's a, if, if it's a function to begin with. And let's see if the inverse of it is a function. Let's just do a really rough sketch of the graph. Is that all right? Yeah. It's too late for before we get started. We've already started. So uh, let's just do a rough sketch of this. What's it going to look like? Where's it going to start? Well, first of all, let's do this. What's it going to look like with that squared right there? What does that tell you? Uh. Yes, thank you, a parabola. All right, so you should know what a square looks like. A square looks like a parabola, correct? All right, and so uh, is it stretched out? Is it, is it, what, what's, I always forget those words. What do they call it? Compressed and expanded, okay. Yeah, this is the first time I've heard those. Usually just make them skinnier, or make them fatter, okay? That's how I normally say it. Is it gonna do that? No, because there's no number out in front of there. Um, so really, what's the only thing that this parabola does? It just goes to the what? To the left, three, one, two, three, and down five, one, two, three, four, five. Again, very rough sketch, and so it's going to look like this, and it curves. Oh, that's awful, but you get the idea, all right? It's pretty terrible. You don't have to laugh that loud, for goodness sakes. All right, so there's my arrows. Anyway, that's it's good enough for what we're trying to do. What are we trying to do? First of all... Now, they don't ask this, but I'm going to ask this. Is this thing a function to begin with? Don't all answer at once, for goodness sakes. <laughs> it's like silence in here. All right, look. So yes, it's a function because it passes the vertical line test. What does that mean that it passes the vertical line test? Where it only hits, any vertical line on this graph will only hit at one point. So yeah, it's a function. They tell you it's a function right here anyway, because f of x, all right, that's a function. Question is, is, it, is the inverse of this a function? Do I have to graph the inverse of it in order to tell it's a function or not? No, I can just apply the horizontal line test and then see if the uh, inverse of this is going to be a function or not. So is it? No, it's not, all right, because, all right, Braden, just, 
you just go on way too long. All right? I could, for one laugh, I get it. Do one laugh, but end it there, okay? Not that funny. So this is, so the inverse is what? Not a function. Or you just put no. I'll just write it out, okay? So that's not a function. Just for fun, I wasn't planning on doing this. But actually, no, I was planning to do it. It's the last thing, so forget that for now. We're going to get to it in a second because it is something I was going to do, so I guess I was thinking ahead. Uh, what we're going to do, though, now is we're actually going to find out what is the inverse of this function. Okay, So they're going to ask you, this is, so this is like part A, and this is part B, and they're going to ask you to find the inverse of the function. Find out what it actually is. Okay? So how do we do that? We learned this yesterday. Big hint. How do we find the inverse of a function? I'll tell you what, let me, we don't flip them yet. So instead of f of x, because this isn't a function anyway, is it? So I can't really put f of x equals anything. I'm going to write y equals, what's, the, and I'm just going to write this down. I'm just writing the original I mean, the original is a function, so I could have put f of x. Anyway, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> so there's the original function. So what do we do to find the inverse of the function? Say it, Jenny. Don't switch the x and y yet. I just said that. Solve for what? For x. Solve for x. All right? So it takes a little bit, but let's solve for x. I'm going to get x by itself. What's the first thing I'm going to do? We're back to algebra. What do I do first? Add a 5 to both sides. <laughs> what did you say? Make y 0? No. We're going to, in order to solve for x, okay, I kind of, actually, I mean, he's kind of has a point because if you make y equal to 0, you can find the x-intercept, all right, but that's not what we're finding. We're just solving for x. So we're going we're gonna to add 5 to both sides. So I got y plus 5, shh equals x plus 3 squared, right? Easy first step, no big deal. Algebra one step. Okay, now, what do we have to get rid of now? Gavin, you watching? What do we have to get rid of now? I right, hear whispers. Yeah, say boldly. Get rid of the squared. How do we get rid of a squared? Take the square root, that's right. So we take the square to this side. I'm not going to show the square root on this side, but you know what's going to happen to that going to cancel out, right? But what do we have to do over here? Take the square root of this side, okay? Um, but we also, when we take the square root, do you remember this? Put a plus or minus in front of it? Yeah. Because what's the square root of 9? It's not just 3, is it? What is it? It's plus or minus 3, right? Because what does this mean? The square, make it look like a square root. This means what number times itself is equal to 9? Well, 3 times 3 is 9, correct? But also, what else? Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. That's why you put the plus or minus. So I'll put a plus or minus there. All right, one more step to get x by itself. What is it? Subtract 3. So let's write it real nice and neat. Y, or x equals, sorry. X equals, uh, let's put the 3 out front. Is that all right? I'm sorry, it'd be a negative 3. Did I put it out front? No, I put it in the back. So let's do this. Let's just go plus or minus square root of y plus 5, and then what? Minus 3. Everybody with me? All right. Now, you guys were quick to say it earlier, but now you can say it. What do we do now? That's our first step, solve for x. Yeah, just swap the x and the y. So it's going to be y equals plus or minus square root of x plus 5 and then minus 3. The minus 3 is outside the square root. Don't put it inside the square root. And so that's it. That's the answer. That's what they want you to find. They want you to find the inverse of this function right here. So these two are inverses of each other. So if I graphed both of those, tell me something we learned yesterday. If I graph a function and its inverse, there's a relationship in that graph. Do you remember what it was? It's symmetric to each other about the what? The y equals x-axis. That's right. Everybody follow me on that? Okay. So the third part of this question is, it says use a graphing calculator in the book, 
Um, I'm not requiring you to have a graphing calculator. Um, they're kind of expensive. I don't know if everybody has one or not, but I like that Desmos program. Desmos, Desmos, whatever. I'll say Desmos. Is that free? It's, it's completely free. I got an app on my phone, okay? I've got it on my phone. I got it on my computer. Got a bookmark, so I just click it, and then there it is, okay? Um, so that's what we're going to go to now, but I got to make a switcheroo here. Let's do this. And let's go to Desmos. And now I got to go to my, I got to go to this and I got to click on the Desmos and get rid of that. Now, see, this is what people see when I record. So now they can see it. If anybody's actually watching it, <laughs> kind of doubt it. Uh, let's see, what are we going to do? Let's graph. Let's graph the first function, okay? And I'm gonna show you a, a cool little thing in Desmos that you can do to find the inverse, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it both ways. So just sit, relax, watch. If you have a computer in front of you, does anybody actually put Desmos in your phone? Yeah, I, I would do that, okay? I think it's an app. I think if you just go to the app store, go to Desmos, and then you can um, download it for free. I think you might have to sign up. I don't know if you have to sign up for anything or not. It might just download and you're good to go. All right, so that's what I would do if I were you. So I'm gonna go y equals x um, plus three, and then squared, there's probably a shortcut to squared, but I'm gonna go to this thing and just put squared, and then minus five. All right, so there's my first graph. And that looks kind of like that junky graph that I drew, except it looks nice instead of mine, looked terrible. But you get the idea, right? You went over what? negative three down to negative five, see that? And then it curves up like this, curves up like that. If you wanted to be more accurate on your own graph paper, right, put in a couple points, right, and see, see how wide the thing actually is, all right? Now, this is kind of cool. I'm gonna show you how to do an inverse, how to graph an inverse function uh, on this program very, very easily. So I'm gonna copy that and then I'm gonna come down to the second line right here, I'm gonna paste it. See, just put the blue one on top of the red one, right? See, the, the first one was red, the second one is blue. Watch what I'm gonna do. Remember how to find the inverse, the second step? What do we do the X and Y? We just switch them, right? That's what we do right here. So watch, instead of this being Y, what am I gonna make it? X, instead of this being X, I'm gonna make it Y, and there is our inverse. Okay, so the red one is the original one, and the second one is the inverse. Now, let's look at the inverse. We've already determined this. We already did the horizontal line test, right, to determine that the inverse was not a function. But you can look at the inverse right now, and it does not pass the what? The actual inverse function. Or it's not a function. I shouldn't say inverse function. But the inverse is not a function because it doesn't pass the what? The vertical line test. You see it? So the graph itself, you can see it's not a, it's, it's, uh, doesn't pass the vertical line test, so it's not a function. The original one didn't pass the horizontal line test, so the inverse is not a function. You can see it both ways, all right? Which is kind of nice. It is, but remember I said on this program, all you have to do is interchange the X and the Y, and it does the inverse for you. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna attempt to do it. I think I, I practiced this yesterday. Hopefully I still remember to do it, um, or I'm able to do it, is I'm gonna type what our inverse was, okay? We just did the work to find the inverse. I just wanna see if it's this, <coughs> excuse me. I wanna see if it's the same thing as this. <coughs> All right, um, I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm just gonna hide it. And so what was it? It was y equals, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna see if the plus or minus is needed on this. I'm not gonna put the plus or minus right now. It may not put, the bottom of it, I'm not really sure, but let's let's just do it. So if I go, see that little keyboard thing, show keyboard, and then it's got a little square root right there. So I hit square root, and then I put x plus five. You remember this from what we just finished doing, correct? Then I put minus three. Oh, it doesn't, yeah. See how, if I didn't put the plus or minus, see how it didn't put the bottom of it? See, it just put, it just put the top part of it, but this thing should curve around. Agreed? Let me blow it up a little bit. 
See that it comes to this point, then it should go around right here. Why doesn't it do it? Because I didn't put what? The plus or minus. Let's see, plus or minus. Let's see if it, no. Plus, I'll just put plus minus, nope. How did I do this? I know I did this yesterday. Is Maybe. I think I should be able to do a plus or minus, but again, I, I'm relatively new to this program, so I know how to do a few things on here, but let's just put a minus here. There it goes. All right, two different colors. But actually, if I wanted to, watch, I could cheat, and I could make that green. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> now, it's, now we got it. All right, so there's the inverse, and there we go. Now, what did we say earlier? It's symmetric to the what? Y equals X axis. Oh, you got to put a space. After I put the 5 in there, I put a space and then put minus 3. If you did not do that, it would put the, the minus 3 inside the square root. Is that what you're... On a graphing calculator? To tell you the truth, I haven't used a graphing calculator in over 20 years. In my other school, I would teach how to graph stuff on a ca ca graphing calculator. I have not used it in so many years and they've probably changed a lot of things on the graph and calculator since I've used it, so I could not tell you. All right. What's it doing? You're not getting this? Yeah, yeah, they do give quite an explanation on there. Um, but I would use your phone and use the Desmos app. I think it's easiest, it's the cleanest, it just looks really nice, okay? I probably will not ask you to do this on a test. All right. Well, no, that's not true. I probably will. Here's another thing I discovered today. I could put a, make that a dash line, dotted line. Okay. So let's take a look at this for a second. Okay. Let's just play around with it. Remember, remember yesterday we did that table, and when you put all the values of the ordered pairs for the table. How do you know what the inverse is? You just switch the what? The x's and the y's, correct? So let's see if it works on this graph. Uh, so for instance, well, this point right here is going to be the same exact point for both of them, so I'm not really going to check that. Let's blow it up a little bit bigger just so I see ones. There we go. Um, so what's a, what's a point where you could, this point right here, so where do you think that point is? And it's kind of... There it goes. That's negative 5, negative 1 on the red one. So where do you think the corresponding point lies on the green one? Negative 1, negative 5, right? So let's see. Does it? Negative 1. Got to scoot. Oops. Got to scooch down a little bit. There it is right there. Look. There's negative 1, negative 5. Agreed? It's a little touchy. There it goes. There's negative 1, negative 5. All right? So that's kind of interesting, right? You find a point that lies on one on your original one, and then the one on the inverse, you just switch the x and the y. All right? We're doing that a lot, aren't we? Switching the x and the y for uh, the inverse. So that's kind of cool. Uh, let's look at this point right here, um, negative 5, negative 3 on the green one. What's it going to be on the red one? Negative, negative 3. I'm sorry, what was this? Negative 5, negative 3. And what's this one going to be? Yeah, negative 3, negative 5. Okay, do you see that? So if you were to graph an inverse, if you graph the original one first, right, and find some points where you know where it lies, and then just switch the x and the y, and that'll help you uh, graph the inverse of that function. Does that make sense? All right, so that could be really helpful. And it's nice to be able to see on something like this, you know, because it just, it's quicker, it's easier, it's cleaner, looks nice, and you can see what it's doing. All right, enough of that. Everybody good with that? All right, now that was the stuff I wanted to teach you yesterday, so we just didn't get to it. So now let's change this around and go back to Illustrator right there. And then, now let's, um, Let's do the stuff I wanted to do today. I've got 25 minutes, so I should be able to finish this. 
No more graphing on the stuff that we're going to do today. So that's kind of nice, isn't it? Did you realize there was going to be this much graphing in this class? Probably not. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to give you two functions and I'm going to talk about them. And actually what we're doing today, we did a little bit of uh, back in section one, two, the second lesson of the year that we did. And you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second, but write this down first. And then I'm going to do the inverse. Now, if you wanted to, you could find the inverse. Actually, yeah. You could find the inverse if you wanted to, right? Solve for x, flip the x and the y, but this is what it ends up being. So I'll save you the work. Here's what the question says. I'm going to read it off to you. I'm not going to write it down. It's too much to write. It's like three lines of my writing anyway. It says, if the inverse function is also a function, right? So this is a function and this is a function. It says, then a composition. You remember that word composition? Okay. The composition of the function and its inverse, it says, produces a unique result. The unique result is actual, is, uh, is x. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. That may not have made any sense to you, but I thought it was important enough to read. So if both of these are functions, then if I go the composition of these two functions together, it's going to equal x, just the letter x. So do you remember the composition stuff? Do you remember this? F composition G of x. Remember that? All right, what does this mean, f composition g of x? It means f of what? g of x. Yeah? That means you take the g function, you put it into what? The f function. You with me? So we're going to do that, and then we're going to come up with an answer. I'll show you what we're going to do. Pretend this is f of x and pretend this is g of x. All right, they're two different functions because this is the inverse of that function, okay? but pretend this is g of x. So what we're going to do first is take this and we're going to throw it into what? This x right here. Okay? Got two guys right here aren't paying a lick of attention. You're going to not have a idea of what's going on. But, you know, that's seal your fate. Good enough. So watch. What if I had g of f of x? What's this going to be? This is going to be g of of f of x. Okay? Everybody see that? What does this mean? You take the f function and you do what? Put it into the x for the g function. Does this come back to you? Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. Yeah, it was. A few months. <laughs> All right, so it was a little bit ago. But that's, that's important stuff. So now we're going to use it again. That's why we learned it. So now we can do it. So here's what we're going to do. Um, Instead of g of x, what is this? This is f to the negative first of x, or the inverse of x. So let me rewrite it one more time, but instead of g of x, I'm going to write it like this. So the question, well, actually, yeah. We're going to go f composition f to the negative first, or the inverse. They put a bracket instead of a parentheses because they're going to put a parentheses right here. That way you don't have a million parentheses all over the place like you did up here, okay? So what we want to do is we want to show that this actually equals the value of x. We, it's going to equal x. All right? You'll see in a second. Okay? Once we start plugging the numbers in, you're like, oh, okay, now I think, hopefully, <laughs> you'll say that. Now it makes sense. All right? So I want to show this, and I also want to do the composition the other way. So what are we going to do? We're going to go that composition that of x. If both of these, if this equals x and this equals x, that means that these are both uh, functions. They're both functions, okay? Yep. Everybody, everybody with me? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. You'll see as we do the problem it'll make a little more sense. Then they're both functions. 
Okay, we're just showing that they're both going to be functions. Because remember, on that last one, the first thing was a function, but the, the inverse was not a function, correct? So that will not work with this stuff right here. But let's see if this one does. All right, so what does this mean? This means we're going to take the inverse function and put it into what? The original function. So that means, watch what we're going to do. We're going to take this, that's our inverse. We're going to put it in for x on the original function. And let's work it out. We'll do some algebra with it, do some math, and see what it comes out to be. All right? If it comes out to be an x, we're on our way. Then we do it the other way. Then we're going to take this, put it in for this x. We're going to do some algebra, work it out. And if it comes out to equal x, if both of them come out to equal x, then we both know that the original one and the inverse are functions, um, and that's what we're trying to do, OK? Does that make sense? Yeah, let's do it. Let's take this and put it in for this. So what do we get? 3 times x. What's our x? It's all this stuff right there. So it's 3 times what? x plus 2 over 3. Right? That's my 3x, right? Because we're taking this and we're replacing it in for this x, and then what? A minus 2 on the end. All right, let's see if this works. Let's do some math. Just regular old algebra 1 stuff. What do we do to simplify this? Well, I got a 3 on the top, 3 on the bottom. What happens? Cancels out. You can probably do the next step in your head, can't you? X, well, the 3 canceled out. The 3 canceled out. <coughs> So why carry the 3 over it? Canceled out. So it's just, it's just x, right? I'll write it out. x plus 2 minus 2. See that? See this? And that canceled, so I'm just left with x plus 2, and then I got this minus 2 on the end. Well, plus 2 minus 2 is what? 0. So what does that turn out to be? Turns out to be x. That's what we're looking for, isn't it? Okay, we want that composition to come out to be an x, right? If it's going to be, if the inverses are going to be functions of each other. So now... Let's get rid of this arrow, and let's get rid of this. Now what are we going to do? Now we're going to do this one. We're taking the f function and putting it into the inverse, right? It's like the g. It's like we're taking the g, or we're taking the f and putting it into the g function. So we're taking this. Where are we putting it into? Into that x right there. And then we'll do some algebra and see what it comes out to be. If it comes out to be x, then what do we know about both of those? They're functions and they're inverses of each other, okay? So let's, um, let's do it. Uh, what do we got? x plus 2. So instead of x, what are we writing? 3x minus 2. And then you just do the rest of it. What? Plus 2. And that whole thing is over what? 3. Okay? Well, minus 2 plus 2. Now we have, I'll just do the steps, 3x over 3. Now what happens? That cancels. Check it out. What are we left with? We're left with x. So if both of them come out to be an x, we know, first of all, they are inverses of each other, and they're also functions. That's what they want you to do. That's not too hard, is it? No, it's, it's really, it's almost identical to what we did in section 1-2. Almost identical, except now we know a little bit more. We know more about functions. We know about inverses. And now if they both come out to be an x, then they are uh, inverse functions of each other. We good? Let's do one more example and we'll be done. This is example five. So they give you f of x. And it says find. Actually, a couple to do a couple things here. It says find the inverse of x. And then it also says verify that they're both inverse functions. All right, that's where we do that f of g of x thing, that composition. But the very first thing we're going to do is figure out 
what the inverse is. Now, in this problem right here, they actually told you what the inverse was. It's, they saved you the work, okay? So they told you what the inverse was. This one, we gotta find the inverse, which shouldn't be that hard. So if we find the inverse of this, let's do this. Y equals 4x minus 9. This should be easy, just solve for x now. So I add a 9 to both sides. That's y plus 9 equals 4x. This comes out a little bit ugly, but that's okay. Um, we divide both sides by 4. So what's x equal to? y plus 9 over 4. Okay, nothing cancels out. We'll just leave it like that. But we're not quite done. What do we have to do? We solve for x. Now what do we, we do? Switch the x's and the y's. So we put y equals x plus 9 over 4. Four. So this is my inverse function. So it says, find the inverse function. What is it? Well, it's x plus 9, what? Over 4. So we just found it. Remember, we could have found it, we could have found it up here, couldn't we? All right, but they just gave it to you. If you wanted to, you could have gone through there, solve for x, and then switch the x and the y. That's what you would have gotten. But this one, they just asked you to do that step. That was easy, wasn't it? Yeah. So let's get rid of that, just so I have some room here. Now the question says, it's like a two-parter, the question says verify that f of x and the inverse of x are inverse functions. So how do we verify that? That's when we do the f of the inverse of x, okay? And that should equal what? x. And then what do we do? We go the inverse composition, the function of x should equal what? x. If they both don't equal x, then they're not inverse functions of each other, okay? All right, so let's do it. So what do we do here? Let's put the inverse into the original function. So let's take this one. I'm not gonna draw the circles and arrows now, okay? You can do it if you want to. But I'm gonna take this and put it in for this x right here. It's pretty much the same problem as what we did. It's just doing it another time just so you get familiar with it. So uh, what do we have? We got four times what? What are we putting in for that x? x plus nine over four. And then minus nine. Okay, let's see what we get. Again, this is almost the same exact problem. All right, that cancels, that cancels. Nine minus nine is zero. What is it? It's x and it works. At least that one works, right? But both of them have to work. So now this time, instead of putting the inverse into the original one, we're gonna take the original one, we're gonna put it into the inverse. All right, so instead of x plus nine, what's it gonna be? Four x minus nine plus nine over four. See that? See, that was our x, wasn't it? And what did I replace that x with? Whatever the original function was. So I took this, put it in place of this. And then I just wrote down the rest of that little, I don't know, algebra thing. <laughs> All right, and you see what happens here. We just did it before, it's just doing it again, just to verify it, All right? So that's zero, then this four cancels with that four, what are we left with? So are these two, is this and this inverse functions of each other? Yeah, they are, okay? Again, if you wanted to, you could, oh, I got it written down here. You could go back to the uh, graphing, and let's get rid of this, let's get rid of that, and that, and that. We'll keep that y equals x there, I think that's kind of important. So let's put the original thing, the same problem we just did, y, equals 4x minus 9, okay? So it works out nice. You don't have any curves or anything. It's just, it's linear, okay? It's a straight line. So that's your, uh, that's your graph right there. And then, what can I do to type in the inverse? I, I mean, I could put, where is it? x plus 9 over 4, y equals x plus 9 over 4. That'd be okay. Or what's an easy way on this particular program that I can put the inverse in there. Just switch the what? The x's and y's. So let's put x equals what? 4y minus 9. Okay. So those are our two graphs. 
Okay. Do they look like they're inverses of each other? Yeah. Do they look like they're functions? Yeah. yeah. Because look, does the red one pass? Like, forget that. Let's pretend we didn't know what the inverse looked like. I could tell right now by that graph that the inverse is a what? Function by the horizontal line test, okay? First of all, the original one is a function because the vertical line test, and I can just look at this and say, oh, the inverse, even though I don't know what the inverse looks like right now, I can say that the inverse is also a function because it passes the horizontal line test. All right, now if I put the actual inverse on there, you could see that that inverse is a function because it definitely passes the vertical line test. All right, a lot of stuff, isn't there? A lot of things to keep straight. That's why you gotta study it. You can't just put the time into it like you did in your Algebra 1 class or your Geometry class or your Algebra 2 class. Okay, you gotta stay on top of this stuff which means you gotta put some extra studying into it. Okay, one thing, the best thing, I think, is to watch the videos again, or at least go to the part where you were confused, okay? Do that at the very least. You don't have to watch the whole thing, but go to the part that you got a little confused on, watch it again. Take good notes on it, okay? Compare it to the notes that you took in class. Maybe you missed something, maybe it'll make more sense. Another thing you could do is go to somebody else's uh, channel. Go to Khan Academy. Okay, it's a great channel. Um, and just put in whatever the title of this lesson was, the um, inverse functions, all right? And, they'll, and he'll do a lot of the same stuff. Sometimes it's easier to understand other people than it is me, all right? Sometimes it's good to hear me a second time, all right? Because maybe you're dozing, maybe you're thinking of other things. I get it, I, I've been there a million times, all right? I wanna concentrate, I wanna pay attention, but man, it's the end of the day, it's kind of warm in here. Right, you've gone through a whole day. I get it, right? I'm not oblivious to the fact <laughs> that this is probably the last place you wanna be last period of the day. I get it. But you gotta make sure that you stay up on it, okay? This is the kind of class that you gotta stay up on it. You can't just say, yeah, I think I got it, and then not worry about it again, all right? So let's make sure we do that. All right, enough jabbering. So what did I give you now? I gave you let me change this back again so I can write. I know it said we're going to use the whole period to do this, but that's okay. So 25 to 34 is what you're doing. It's the same section, still 3, 4. So section 3, 4, B. There it is. Page 156. That's your homework tonight. Okay? Uh, didn't I sign it yesterday? Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. Do you want to go over it now? Or do you just want to go over them both tomorrow? Let's just go over them both tomorrow. Good idea. All right? So, if you didn't finish the A part, now's your chance to do it. Um, that was 15 to 24, and this just continued after that. So we'll do a question and answer thing tomorrow. We'll also uh, do a quick review of a, for a quiz. We're taking a quiz on Thursday over 3-3 three, three, and 3-4. Three, this stuff is 3-4. Three, 3-3 four. Three, three was, I don't know what 3-3 three, three was. Let me go back. Graphs of nonlinear inequalities. So inequalities is the shading stuff. Remember we did the shading, right? And they're nonlinear, which means it's not a straight line. So like the curves, right? The parabola, the cubed, the, um, the what do you call that? the absolute value, all that kind of stuff, all right? So that's what we'll do tomorrow. Basically, just review the homework, review for the quiz. Thursday, we'll take the quiz. And, and maybe we'll start on the next lesson on Thursday. Maybe we'll start on a Friday, okay? Everybody good? All right.